The Old Testament reading this morning is from Genesis um, 40, 45, 16 to 28. When the report was heard in Pharaoh's house, Joseph's brothers have come. It pleased Pharaoh and his servants well. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, Say to your brothers, do this. Load your beasts and go back to the land of Canaan, and take your father and your households and come to me, and I will give you the best of the <coughs> land of Egypt, and you shall eat the fat of the land. Command them also, do this, <coughs> take wagons from the land of Egypt for your little ones and for your wives, and bring your father and come. Give no thought to your goods, for the best of all the land of Egypt is yours. The sons of Israel did so, and Joseph gave them wagons according to the command of Pharaoh, and gave them provisions for the journey. To each and all of them he gave festal garments, but to Benjamin he gave 300 shekels of silver and five vessels of garments. To his father he said as follows, Ten asses loaded with the good things of Egypt, and ten she asses loaded with grain, bread, and provisions for his father on the journey. Then he sent his brothers away, and as they departed, he said to them, Do not quarrel on the way. So they went up out of Egypt and came to the land of Canaan to their father Jacob. And they told him, Joseph is still alive, and he is ruler over all the land of Egypt. And his heart fainted, for he did not believe them. But when they told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said to them, and when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of their father Jacob revived. And Israel said, It is enough. Joseph, my brother, my son, is still alive. I will go and see him before I die. Here ends the Old Testament reading. And then in Mark, the 8th chapter, verses 1 through 4. In those days, when again a great crowd had gathered, and they had nothing to eat, he called his disciples to him and said to them, I have compassion on the crowd, because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And I, if I send them away hungry to their homes, they will faint on the way, and some of them have come a long way. And his disciples answered him, How can one feed these men with bread here in the desert? Here ends the reading. And this is our fourth week on this Bread for the Journey series, uh, written by Rolf Svano. And in this story of Genesis that we just heard, God shows abundant provision for his people. God provides Jacob and his sons far beyond what they ever, ever dreamed. You remember the backstory, right? Like, so just really quickly, you know, Joseph was that favored son, got the, red, the royal robe, right? The robe of many colors from Jacob. And the brothers, they were like a little jealous, right? <laughs> And so they, on their journey, they left, the, this, this is the very cliff note version, they left him in a pit, he got rescued unbeknownst to them, got rescued, they told their father that Joseph died, in the meantime he went on to Egypt, he went through a lot of different things until then he became Pharaoh's second hand man, he had a lot of power. And then there's a famine, and, and uh, Jacob's other sons, they go to Egypt, right? And then there's this whole story of forgiveness. And there's a lot to it. I mean, this whole story.
story could take probably a, a eight series of, of just in its own right, but just to kind of, you know, catch us up, because now Jacob had to send all his sons, thinking still Joseph was had died, 20 years he's been grieving, and sends them not even knowing, like, are they going to come back? And so he sends his sons off with a heavy heart. And I'm sure he's waiting. One week. They should get there in a week. Get some stuff. Get back in another week. I'm sure the days just lingered on as he's waiting, looking for them. And then he sees this caravan coming over the horizon. I'm sure he must have wondered, who is that? Could it possibly be my sons? But what's all that stuff they have with them? The carts, the donkeys, they didn't leave with that stuff. I can't help but think he wondered, you know, what did they do, right? It was them when they got closer, because he wasn't, I bet he wasn't even really sure it was them at first. But then he sees them, he sees Benjamin. It's them. They came back not only with the original amount of money they left with, and not just a little grain, but this full provisions. As they came closer, Jacob could see all these fine new clothes they were wearing. Like they, they left in old shepherd's clothes. And now they have all of these fancy Egyptian, you know, uh, I don't know. What's the word? Designer clothes, <laughs> right? It shows how God can graciously give us more than we ever dreamed of. I, Jacob wouldn't have even been able to dream that, let alone here it comes to him. God provides abundantly for our needs, materially, emotionally, spiritually. You know, to get the real gist of this story, and to put ourselves in that Canaanite culture just for a moment, in Jacob's day, they didn't even own a wagon or a car in Canaan. They, didn't, they knew of them, but they didn't have them. It would be like we know of an airplane. I don't think anyone here owns an airplane. I know some people do, but it was, it's kind of like that, right? It's like other places and people have, you know, they did not. They, they went by packing their donkey and that was it. That was their wagon. Their donkey was their wagon. And camel. And these weren't just any old carts that came in. <laughs> these were provided by Pharaoh. So can you imagine? Top of the line, right off the showroom floor, probably carved and intricately and painted. Fit for a king. For Jacob's son to arrive back in Canaan with all these carts with provisions, it would be like driving into an impoverished village with a fleet of limousines filled with stuff and saying, This is yours. It would have been blatantly shocking. And it wasn't just these wagons, it was all these clothes and and these donkeys and all this grain, it was just overwhelming. Remember, this was a time of famine. Jacob didn't know if he was going to survive it and his other loved ones that remained behind. The neighbors, if they had neighbors, you know, can you imagine the neighbors? Who is that? <laughs> right? Wow. I hope they shared. It never, I don't think it ever really says that they shared their abundance. And I hope they did if they had neighbors. You know, as a people of faith, I will say I do not believe we have a divine right to material prosperity like some pastors, I believe, falsely teach. Right? You've heard people preach prosperity gospel. That isn't where I come from. But I also 
don't think we need to feel guilty about the material things that God provides for us. Like it's okay, we, we should, but we need to hold things lightly. Remembering that everything we have belongs to God. We're caretakers of these possessions while we're on this side of our eternal life. If we are blessed materially, we can thank, be thankful and enjoy what we have as we are also generous with others. Jacob and his family had been materially needy. And Jacob was emotionally needy as well. He lost his favorite son, or so he thought, and was grieving, like I said, for over 20 years. He feared that maybe his other sons, and then in this case, Rachel's son, Benjamin, now he was the favored one. <coughs> and and Rachel, the loss of Rachel left a big gap in his life. He didn't know if any of his sons were going to come back. And you know, because he had the favoritism issue going on, which you know, families do even today, right? This favoritism thing, that he probably didn't have a real great relationship with his other sons. <laughs> I'm just guessing here. But they return different men. They return differently. Because of the forgiveness that Joseph gave them. They had confessed their sin before God. They had reconciled with their brother. And now they came clean with their father and told them what had happened. They came back changed. When the truth comes out, that's when healing takes place. Jacob was not only receiving material abundance, but I'm sure emotional abundance as well. Emotional healing. And God wants the same for us. God wants us to be emotionally whole. Most of the time it doesn't happen instantly when we think it should. God brings healing I think when we try to restore relationships, but we have no control over that person's response to us. So even if we're reaching out, the Lord teaches us how to just forgive, and then it's, it's not up to us. That's all we can do is love and forgive and, and ask for forgiveness of another person. I'm sure that neither Jacob or his sons could see the good that was about to, to come about from such horrible jealousy, deceit, loss, grief. Because they're in the midst of it. You don't see it when you're in the midst of it. But God used these situations for good and helped shape generations to come. In the same way, God works through trials in our lives to mature us spiritually, to heal us, to be whole emotionally. God provides abundantly for our needs. And some of you might be thinking, well, that sounds good, but I'm still waiting. <laughs> right? It hasn't happened to me yet. I'm in need of income, or I'm in need of emotional uh, healing, or I don't feel close to God right now. I need spiritual healing. So how can you say that God provides abundantly for my needs? So that's another lesson we learned about God, is that it's in God's timing, not our timing. Think of the day before Jacob returned, saw the caravan coming and returning. Think of the day before that. Just one day. He was grieving still the loss of his wife. He was grieving the loss of his son. He was lonely. He was destitute. There was a famine. He sent his sons off not knowing if they were going to come back. 
He was in despair. And then we were told he was revived. The word revived translated in the Greek Old Testament by a word that is used elsewhere is stirring up dying embers which have been almost extinguished under the ashes. You know that, right? If you ever had a fire outside, you think it's out. But there's like this little, little bit of ember. And that was Jacob. The day before. And then, whew, there it comes. Now, it doesn't always come in like a big sweeping caravan like that in our lives. But provision comes. Maybe not for what we desire, the way we think it's going to happen, but it comes. Maybe not in our timing, but it comes. God provides in ways we would never, ever expect. For Jacob's sons to return with these fancy wagons loaded to the hilt, it was beyond his imagination. And then the last thing he expected was to see Joseph. God delights to surprise us. We are God's children. And God surprises us in ways we would never expect. And the best gifts are usually the ones that are unexpected, right? Having an avalanche today at our home. So, I know a lot of you know this, so I'm not going to go into any detail at all, but when Ward and I were in Pennsylvania, we were losing everything, in including the house, <laughs> including just, you know, finances, everything. God provided in ways that if any of you want to know the whole story, we are always glad to share it because there was nothing less than miracle after miracle, like just the exact amount of money you need for this or just there's one space left in this, you know, uh, mobile home place that we could get. I mean, everything just fell in place. And then... Two years ago, the unexpected blessing of an in-law house being popped on us. Like, oh, okay, <laughs> right? I mean, things I know we could never imagine. And if you look back on your life, I bet there's times that you could share too that, boy, I know God's hand must have been in this. Because I would have never dreamed it would turn out like this. So, why, did, why were they so provided for? Well, you know, Pharaoh, he didn't provide it because of Jacob. It wasn't because of Joseph's sons being great guys. It was because of Joseph. Right? Pharaoh respected and loved Joseph. He appreciated them, so he poured out these blessings on Joseph and for Joseph's family. They didn't deserve it, is my point. Right? They didn't deserve none of us deserve the blessings, but they got them anyway. Abundantly. God doesn't bless us because we're deserving people. God blesses us because of God's Son. God provides blessings for us when we haven't obeyed or we haven't trusted, when we've gone down our own path. Why? Because of Jesus. Because God took our sin and Jesus went to the cross for our salvation. Where sin abounded, Romans 5.20 says, where sin abounded, grace abounded all the more. God provides in God's timing in ways we would never expect with grace, not through merit. And that is providing abundantly. But I have to wonder, and this is just a very quick closing, I have to wonder how long they remembered this provision. 
Because we find as people, we have short memories. And you might wonder why we heard such a short reading of the feeding of the 4,000 this morning, along with this scripture. It's like, how does that go together? <laughs> well, the disciples, Jesus, Jesus before this already fed the 5,000. And the disciples were there, right? So now this opportunity comes up. And Jesus is like, okay, we need to feed these people before they leave. And what do the disciples say? How are we going to do that? Seriously? Like, they just experienced the 5,000. So, wouldn't you think they might say, hey, do you want us to do what we did before? You want us to look for some fish and bread? You know, and you bless it, and we do that thing again? No, no. How can we feed these people in this desert? They forgot. Or they just thought it couldn't happen again, possibly. Couldn't possibly happen again. I think we're not so very different from the disciples. We can forget. You know, Paul said, I was good when I have a lot, I'm good when I have a little. And I think we need to hold that lightly. We need to be good either way. But knowing that all is a blessing from God, all that we have. The fear of scarcity, of not having enough, can be so ingrained in us in this culture that we forget. The world wants us to teach, up, teach us to store up our treasures, to build up our bank accounts, to add to our stuff. The world approves when monies are wisely invested while children still go to school hungry. The world says, and these are some older sayings, the world says, watch out for yourself, take care of your own, grab your own piece of the pie before someone else gets it. The gospel, on the other hand, says, invites us to share the pie to sit in the company of others and care for their needs. To trust that blessing is more powerful than any money market. It invites us to believe down to our very souls that with God all things are possible. And that God provides in God's timing and God's way that we never expect, that we do not deserve. And that is abundant provision. Thanks be to God, our great provider. Amen. So this week, our response, we've been sharing bread. And guess what? Because it's abundant, right? Or you got that theme, right, today, abundance? So you get to have a whole piece of bread. <laughs> or you know, there's probably two. <laughs> probably two pieces. Um, I left the labels here that there's honey sunflower, white Tuscan, marble rye, and whole wheat. And as Judy plays just something quietly in the background, I invite you to come forward, take a piece of bread or two, and eat it, if you want to now, and think about, as, you, as you're coming forward and as you're taking the bread, think of the ways God has abundantly provided for you, despite any current circumstances that might be difficult that you're going through. Because we always have both in our life, happening at once. Blessings, difficulties, right? So let's concentrate on God's abundant provision as we come forward today. Come forward as you feel that.
My son lives about 20 miles from me, and I have a grandson and a granddaughter, so I will be closer to family that I don't see very often. And um, so I'm getting ready for my granddaughter's uh, wedding, which will be in May of 2023, which I will also be a part of. So there's things that I have to look forward to as well. But at the same time, I have been very, very grateful for all of the people and all the places that I have served and who have really, again, have been a significant part of my life here in New England, but also in Sandwich in particular. And um, I am just disappointed that this year that I'm not going to be able to come to the um, fairgrounds on the 9th. <laughs> but um, I will be thinking of you, all of you, uh, often. And I just am, feel very, very grateful and very blessed for God's abundance for me. Thank you, Virginia. Thank you. Thank you. Let us join in our closing song, Bread for the Journey. It's in your insert and also up on the screen. Those who are able, please rise. And then right following, we will have our special time of a fellowship downstairs.
and strengthen us in our faith. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Let us join downstairs. Just a reminder, next week is Worldwide Communion Sunday. It'll be the last of this series called More Than Bread. Oh, he's good. Yeah. He's good.